We are building a model railroad dream landscape in no time during several episodes. I have to move the ICE to the side for a while because we need some room here. We have built a lot so far, but there's also much to do. We will have a lot of fun during the next couple of episodes. The train station is built and we have installed a house illumination. We can let individual windows shine since we have darkened the windows from the inside. For that we have used a special carton. For the interior lighting we have used a Fisman LED and these LEDs are supplied with electricity by this central lighting current. The wiring for that runs down here, you can see the yellow wires there. They come from back there, here you can see our distribution strips with the brown and yellow wires. Before we continue with the landscaping, we want to deal some more with the railroad. I'm talking especially about signals. I have some right here. We have to decide where we want our train to stop or where we want it to drive really fast. That's why I brought different types of signals, which we can set up now. Maybe we can install them as well. What I have right here is a color light home signal. To be very specific, it's a color light exit signal. For all of you that did not have train driver training, this signal would stand where a train would drive out of a train station. In our case, that would be right here. So if the train would come from this direction, that's where the signal would stand. And this right here is a color light entry signal. An entry signal would in reality stand where a train would drive into a train station. In our case, that would be exactly this spot, right before this turnout. So if both tracks are blocked, the train driver would know that he or she cannot enter. So that's the spot for this signal. One exit signal is not enough. The signal must stand in the train station and also somewhere where the train driver can see whether he or she has red or green. So we need a signal for every track. To make it more realistic, we need a second exit signal. But if we want to simulate real situations, we have to keep the third track in mind. It could be that there is also a train waiting. So to be really prototypical, we need also an exit signal there. So to make it as realistic as possible, we would install one, two, three exit signals and also one entry signal. And if you want to really overdo it, if you want it even more realistic, then you would also need an exit signal at this place here, because the train could leave from the other direction. And you must install one here as well. Additionally, you would need a second entry signal over there on this side since a train could also enter the train from this direction. All of that must be kept in mind if you want a maximum of realism. But when you build a model railroad, you might have to make a compromise. So depending on how much you feel like to install signals and depending on how much money or time you want to invest in your system or how realistic you want it to be, you may want to install more or less signals. So much about entry and exit signals. I think I have more than enough here. I'll keep it simple. I will take three signals in total since my train would normally travel in this direction. I can set up the other signals whenever I feel like it. There is one more type of signal which I can typically find in a railroad line like this. I'm talking about a color light track block yard signal. I have a very basic one here for hobby model builders. You might have seen those small signals before whenever you were passing through a train station. Realistically, they would stand here. If a train is waiting here, then the train driver knows that he cannot drive through. You could install that signal theoretically here as well. To indicate that this train cannot exit since the train is blocked, you could also use an exit signal. This spot here would also be correct to signalize that this track is blocked. Since this is a train station exit, you would prefer an exit signal. The question of where which signal goes is very much discussed. We have gathered some information about this topic on the Merklin website. You can find a signal special with a PDF document for download. It explains in detail which type of signal goes where. And if you work with a model railroad from a different time other than the modern one, like a steam railroad for example, you will find a lot of information about the older signal types with a moving signal wing. 
but all the signals have basically the same position on your tracks. The next signal type we want to use, if you want to be really correct, is this color light distance signal. This distance signal is always installed if a train driver cannot see the home signal. It is usually installed about 500 meters before the home signal. For example, if we install our entry signal here, it could not be seen by our train conductor in this ICE, since it is right in the curve. So in reality, we would install this distance signal 500 meters before the signal and that would be roughly here. That way our train conductor would know from this point on that there is a signal coming and it is either red or green. And if it's red, he could start slowing down to come to a stop right at this signal. What other signals do we have? We could also install a color light block signal in order to divide the line into blocks. That way we could decide that one train on this track is allowed to drive, but a second train on the track has to wait back there until the first train has left the block. You call that a block section control. You find all kind of tutorials for that on our Merklin channel. With that you can automize the process on your model railroad. Uh, and you also let several trains drive on your system automatically. You could do that with a mobile station, but you would additionally need a so-called M84 decoder, which is capable of controlling such a block section. But that's more for a model railroad professional, so I will not go into details for this. Instead, I will deal with one signal. We tested one on our system before and we will deal with a signal here in our train station. We will install it here next to this long straight track. An exit signal fits here best, so let's install that right now together. There are different ways to install a signal. We will choose the simplest one. We will first check if everything works, if we can control it and if we can let it light up. Depending on what works, we will know what to do next. That's the signal here. There's this white purple wire attached. We can place the signal right where we want it. You can easily click this to the bottom of the track. So it is standing there already. You can move it forwards or backwards. I would not move it up too far into the curve. Also, you might want to have as much free space as possible in our small model railroad system. I guess right here is perfect. That's looking nice and I'll click it on. Let's check the packaging again. There is the instruction manual as well. We will need that in just one second. Because I don't know the whole process by heart and there's also a digital signal decoder included. Since we don't want to control our signal with a control box but with the mobile station. That's what we need that for. Let me show it to you on the mobile station. That's the control for the ICE2. That's what I use for steering the train. I can press the button for accessories and a keyboard with many different buttons is displayed. I can switch between different accessories since I have already installed different ones on my model railroad system. There are already different turnouts that I can work digitally. This is the first turnout right here. The second turnout with the address number 2 is back there. And there is the third turnout, this one. And a fourth one as well over there. That means the first four addresses in my mobile station are already taken. I could now use address number 5 for my signal for example. So I can say this signal here shall have address number 5. And this signal there address number 6. And this one uh, the number 7. I have a lot of free addresses, we can control up to 320 accessories to be exact. I won't run off fun anytime soon. I will switch to address number 5 for now. That way we can test that later right away. But for now we put the mobile station aside. Let's unpack the rest of the signal package. This piece is needed for a so-called K-track. We don't need that here, that's for a track without the ballast bed. That's a bit on top if the signal stands on a mountain. I'll ignore all of these pieces, I'll just need a few of these items. For example, these small red spikes. You might have seen these spikes in one of our last episodes. They are used to insulate the track. So you won't have any current on the track 
and the train will stop automatically. Uh, we will take care of that later. Now we have already unpacked the most important parts. That's the signal that I had briefly installed the other way. And here are two important wires. And look here, I have already assigned the address number 5 to this signal in the last episode. So we can use that right away. To assign the address, I simply switched these little dip switches. The information on which levers you have to turn up in order to assign address number 5 can be found in the back of the instruction manual. There is the address list. And if you look for the address number 5, it says here, that lever number 1 and 3 must be turned up. You might not really see that right now, but you can download the instruction manual and the list from the Merklin website. You can look up all the products before you use or buy any of them. Alright, address number 5 is already set. That's the decoder. I can take that out of there and now we can connect everything. I'll check the instruction manual to see where I have to connect which wire. I always forget that. And at the end of the instructions you will find a connection diagram to see where which wire has to go. Just remember this big part here has to face downwards. And when it's down you connect the current to the upper left side. Now on excursus. We could connect the wire directly to the track of course. We can try that and let the signal directly light up. Let's do that first. But then I want to show you something different afterwards. A little trick to improve the maintenance to make sure that we can always reach the important parts of our model railroad system. I'll connect this wire here. The red wire is connected to B standing for the track current and the brown wire is connected to zero. That's basically all for now. The signal is now connected to the system. Next I can connect the decoder directly up here on the top at the side. Alright, the decoder is now connected to the current of the track. I have turned off the mobile station for now to make sure nothing is damaged. You don't have to do that, but I recommend it. Next I'll connect the signal. It is connected to the opposite side. I will unwild the wire first. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, now I can connect the signal right here at the side. So far I did everything right what you have to pay attention to. My signal has an address, namely number 5, which I have set using this dip switch. I noted that right on there with a pen, so that I will always know that this signal has address number 5. The decoder can be attached underneath the track or even inside the track. I will not do that here since I want to ensure a good maintenance visibility. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now I'll turn the system back on. I don't know if you can see the signal, maybe I'll take it down otherwise. If I turn my system on, my signal lights up green. I'll take it off for you to see, it lights up green. And now I can turn it to a red light using the address number 5. As you can see, I can switch between red and green as often as I want to. And that's all that's to it. Now comes the next step. I want to be able to do the same thing with the signal, but at the same time I want to use the signal to stop the train as well. If the train passes over here, I want the current to stop and accordingly I have to insulate this track. I have connected this signal here since the track was so conveniently close to the wire and to the decoder. Thankfully all these wires are quite long. Because the signal does not care at all where the current is coming from, I could connect the red and brown wire here or there or even back there. And in one of our last episodes we have already constructed a so-called ring circuit. The ring circuit ensures that the current is fed into the system uniformly everywhere all around. It is fed in here and here and there and there as well. This means that the system has a constant performance. We are getting that from our track connector box. That's this little thing right here. And the current flows from it through the brown and red wire into this distribution strip. This one here with the red and brown wires. Now I'll think about the perfect place to position the decoder. Where can I reach it easily later on in case I want to check the address? 
Mm, the attached wire is very long that allows me to place the decoder right here at the front where the rest of my electronic devices are. So I can put it right here, that way I can reach it anytime. I could also attach it to the underside of the table. That would make it really tidy. I'll decide to place the decoder right here. I simply have to cut it and tear off, respectively cut off those spade connectors. That way I can get the current from my signal from somewhere else. I can throw these away, we don't need them anymore. Now I'll peel off the insulation here and there. And then I'll connect two plugs. But before, let's check where we place the decoder. I have pulled two wires through here. Maybe I can pull through these two as well. Then everything is tidy. Best to do it before you peel off the insulation. But that works anyway. So the first wire is through, next the second one. As I said, that way the wires are tidy and you can prevent tangled cables. Now I have it and everything is nice and tidy since I can place the wire right beside the ring circuit. All right, now I'll put through these wires here. This kind of work is really nice if you build a very big railroad system because it makes everything clean and tidy. It makes it also much easier if you have to look for an error later on. If you have to find it, you can systematically check for it. All right, now I'll put it through this shrink tubing. Ah, uh, it is too tight, so we will make a new one. A shrink tubing was also included into the packaging. I'll check how long we need this wire. There is not much room here. I can extend it if I attach a plug and a socket to it. I could also solder it, that would also be an option. Now I need my screwdriver. Here it is. So we attach a brown plug to extend it. That way our wire is long enough. And then we will attach a second shrink tubing for our new wires. The power to the system is switched off at the moment. I pressed stop on the mobile station. So we are safe from small electric shocks and short circuits. Uh, we unscrew that and fix that. This plug is ready. Next, we need a red plug and of course a red socket because we want to extend the wire. Let me show you what a socket is. Look here. These are plugs and these here are sockets. You can pin them together and that way you can extend a wire. I'll attach a red plug and maybe I can run it over to the ring circuit. But I guess I can extend the wire a bit since I want to place my decoder somewhere where it is easy to reach. This length would be actually enough. I can reach over there. I connect it now on a test basis for you to see that it works. And after that, I will extend it. I'll do that after the video. That way you don't have to wait so long. I'll connect it now and then you can see it. So the signal is no longer connected to the track. It is connected to the decoder. Here it is. And this rail track is separated. And when I press the stop button, my signal lights up red. I'll take it off again. Now we know it works together with the ring circuit. Here you can see it. It lights up red and I can switch it manually from red to green or the other way around. The most important features are working. You can start playing with the signal now. You still have to stop the train by hand, but the basic features are working. Now comes the second equally important step. We want to be able to turn off the power. We take this red wire here, this wire will lead to the decoder and from there over to the track. We can use it to decide whether current will flow here or not. I have explained that already in one of our first episodes. We need that here as well. So relax and watch me install it. We want our train to stop here. That's a very long track. And we want to insulate this track. Here is a second very long track. Both are very long. Let's see, here is a shorter one. I will switch their positions and have the short track here. If the insulated long track is here, the train might already stop here if it is driving slowly. If the ICE is rather fast, it might have a bit of a braking distance. It shouldn't be too short, but also not too long. So depending on what kind of trains you have on your railroad system, you must choose either longer or shorter tracks. What's important is that you always choose the exact same length for the braking section everywhere on the system.
If you take a track like this one, I would choose a track of about the same length on the parallel track. It roughly fits here in terms of length. We have 17.2 centimeters here and an 18.8 centimeters over there. Uh, they have almost the same length. I will use this here as a breaking section. And now I will insulate the whole thing. We put these red spikes on these tongues of the railroad track. That way the track is insulated here at this side. We repeat this on the other side on the center conductor rail. You call this red spike a center rail conductor by the way. We have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the track again. The center conductor rail, that way this track is completely insulated and we are almost finished with this section. But first I have to do it with this track as well. So let's take down the signal again. Here as well, insulated the part that's opponent to my braking section by using this center rail insulator. That's not hard at all. At the beginning it might be a little more difficult. Now that's what you have to do and that's what it should look like. Red to red, I hope you can see it to some extent. Here is no more current, neither in the other direction. This track is completely insulated. The train must stop here since it is not powered anymore. I'll place the signal down there briefly and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I will let the ICE pass over this section and without breaking it manually it will stop. I will even switch the signal to green. Look here, the signal is green but the section is insulated. So the ICE must stop here. And there it stands. This spot is pretty good actually. And if I move it back a little bit, it wants to start driving again. And it doesn't matter which way I set the signal, either red or green, that doesn't make any difference. I change the direction and move okay. him back a little bit. I now decide that the signal will get power again. I remove these two tracks again and take them apart. Uh, now we have two red wires coming out of the decoder. One of the wires will be connected to a spot with current, for example the track before or after the insulated section. The other wire will be connected to a spot where we don't want to have current. This instruction manual will tell us luckily which wire must go where. So let's remember this little box is down in the description and here it is down as well. Let's see how we have to connect it. It is described in detail in here. The wire that refers to the spot without current is connected down here. There is only one way to insert it. You cannot do anything wrong. Now there is an upper part and lower part. The upper part goes to the insulated section. So right here, to B, for track current. The lower part is connected to a track section that has current. In this description it is the track after the insulated section. It doesn't matter if you connect the wire up here or down there. We could also connect this piece to our ring circuit. That's track current as well. It doesn't matter where we connect the two. Right now I don't want to make it too complicated. I'll follow the instructions and connect it here. You can close the decoder now. You can also click that underneath the track. But since we are planning a large railroad system, it is better to have the decoder in place where you can easily reach it later on. Alright, this track is insulated. The train should break here. At this point we have current again, so one wire will be connected to the insulated track, the second wire will be connected to a track behind the insulated one. Let's reconnect it. And then let's check if our ICE stops. The signal is set to green. I'll set the signal to red now. The exact same thing as before should happen now. The ICE should stop. It's quite on track. Now the ICE should stop as soon as it reaches the red signal at this spot here. Let's see. And it stops. If I set the signal back to green, the train should start driving again. Let's switch to green. And here it goes. Now I simply have to repeat these steps for every signal I want to have on my model railroad system. We have just talked about good spots for further signals. Then I can stop my train without a second mobile station or without a second person. 
Set it to red and it will stop. And switch to green and it will continue. I can hide the wires more nicely under the system. Or I could connect it to the ring circuit. That's another possibility. Alright, so have fun if you continue crafting yourself. I will start working on the second signal, then it will be installed until the next episode. Since we want to continue with the landscaping anytime soon. But before we start working on our mountains with plaster, we want all the electrical work to be finished. Otherwise, we might have to tear open our landscape and that would be very sad. Have fun doing it yourself. I'll continue with the second signal in the meanwhile.